All right, so I've been meaning to do this for a long time. Here I've got a brand new Calvert split spring. I went ahead and just unbolted it just to make it easier to put in the press, but putting the bushings in. So you'll kind of notice the paint, right? Might potentially hold the uh, bushing away from the edge of the spring. The side's not quite as bad, but you can kind of get an idea of that. And then all of the schmutz that's kind of inside the end of the spring. All right, so here you go, it's a little side by side. Get the paint prepped off of there. And then just use a little Tootsie Roll guy and just clean the inside of it. Just as there's like less crap to push the pushing through. So we just use one of these little dealios. You can buy these at McMaster for pretty cheap. I think you could get like the little Arbor's three bucks and then the, the little Tootsie Rolls are, I don't know, maybe 50 cents a piece or something. They're cheap. So we just use that just to dust the inside. That way that bushing press is in there easier. All right, so here we go. Set up in the press, push the pushing over the hole, aim the press. This press is itching, it actually has the air over hydraulic seal on it. It's gonna take a little while, it's a little slow. All right, here we go, we got the press engaged. Just start pushing the bushing in. Thing's holding itself. Not taking a tremendous amount of pressure to push it in there, but as you can imagine, that aluminum bushing is going to be slightly deformed after we push it into the spring. There's just no two ways about it, it's just part of the process. If I leave the bushing too loose, it'll spin and eventually wear out, and if I put it too, put it way too tight, then it's going to deform a lot. So I think I got the press just right for these pieces. There you go, it's bottomed out, five tons or so, so there we go. All right, so we got both sides of the bushings pressed in. You can see that they fit on both edges flat. Two 955s, so it's 40 thousandths smaller than three inches. So that's just gonna give you 20 thousandths on each side additional clearance for the inside the slider body, which is gonna make this thing easy to assemble. So that's what we're looking for. All right, so after you get done pressing these bushings in, You'll sometimes notice that the holes don't line up exactly perfect. Like there's a little deformation going on in the aluminum, things of that sort. So we use our 5 8 carbide tip ramer just to clean the holes out. But you could also just use your regular 5 8 drill bit. Hopefully that wasn't too loud and that actually made sense, but we'll see. All right, so here's the bag of goodies. This is the hardware kit for the slider assemblies. So you've got a half inch diameter bolt, couple washers, the sleeve in the center, a knot. So the bolt is really just a retention device. All it's gonna do is just hold the hold the assembly together. The axle is this piece of chromoly tubing, 5 8 outside diameter, 058 wall thickness. Uh, if you ever need to make some new ones and you don't wanna bug me about them, I don't I, I stock these, so if you need them, just let me know. But these all their the only purpose is just to hold the bearing apart. So you're gonna notice that when you go to slide this through the bushing, it fits really nice to start, right? There's actually almost a little bit of clearance in it. If you play with this you can feel there's a little bit of clearance after we get done pressing this bushing in this sleeve is not going to slide through there anymore because the deformation from the spring eyelet squeezing the bushing down it's going to make that hole smaller than it is supplied so this these bearings i get from granger so that part number right there if you go on granger you can buy this bearing again if you need to replace them uh, i also stock them obviously but if you need one uh, and I'm not available or I can't get them to you soon enough, you can get them a Ranger. So once we push this bushing into the spring eyelet, it's gonna squeeze it down a little bit. So after we're done installing it, this bush or this uh, axle is not gonna slide through here easily. And so what we'll end up having to do, we'll clamp it in the vise and we'll just use a regular drill and a 5 8 drill bit and we'll clean that hole out and make it so this axle can slide through there.